Then Jesus went back to the same way that he had been using when he spoke to the Jews, because they did not believe. It didn't help even if he said something very straightforward to them. Instead, maybe the testimony from what he did could touch some people's heart. Verse thirty-seven: If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. He went back to the fact that he was sent by the Father to do the works. If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me, because Jesus knew very well that the signs he performed, most of the honest Jews would know that if it was not of God, no one could do it. Verse thirty-eight. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works. Jesus knew that they could not get over their doubt about his identity. In appearance. He was from Nazareth of Galilee. He had no form or comeliness. He didn't have prominent background. It was hard for them to believe him. Therefore, Jesus said to them, "Though you do not believe me, believe the works that I have done." They gave the best testimony for me. If you think about what I did seriously and objectively. For example, I opened the eyes of the man who was born blind. If you truly understand the meaning behind these things, you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in Him. You may know and believe the original Greek word is "genesco." One is the past tense; the other is the present tense. It tells that through what he did, Jesus would like them to know step by step, and at the end, draw the conclusion that. All that he did was out of the Father. They might then know and believe that the Father was in him and he in him. According to the normal logic of math, it should be the Son is in the Father, Father in the Son, Son and Father are one. The conclusion is back to verse thirty: I and my Father are one. Therefore, they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. I believe that some of the Jews on sides were touched by what Jesus said. They might think about it seriously, but most of them did not believe. As he spoke, they sought again to seize him, just as they pick up stone but couldn't stone Jesus. They sought to seize him, but they couldn't get him. Why? Because his time had not yet come. Hanak Hanakar was probably the last time Jesus went to. Jerusalem before he went on to the cross. After he left Jerusalem, verse forty, and he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. Verse forty-one. Then many came to him and said, "John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke about this man were true." Verse forty-two. And many believed in him there. It is meaningful for Apostle John to end this event with these verses. Jesus went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first. It went back to John chapter one verse twenty-eight. Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing, there John the Baptist witnessed for Jesus. And the writer of John began to follow Jesus because of the testimony of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the forerunner's forerunner of Lord Jesus' ministry. He made straight the path for Jesus. He introduced Jesus so that people could follow him. We can say that John the Baptist was the first one in the transition of Old and New Testament testament to leave the sheepfold. He was born in the family of high priests. He should be serving in the temple of Jerusalem. However, he left the holy temple of Jerusalem and entered into the wilderness. He preached and baptized people there. He left the sheepfold that was fenced with Moses' law. He went beyond the Jordan River to give baptism. Jesus knew that next time he went to Jerusalem, he could he would become the lamb of the Passover. He would be hung on the cross. Therefore, as he left Jerusalem, he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first, and many believed in him there. They believed that John the Baptist had witnessed for Jesus. What a beautiful picture! Shepherd entered into the sheepfold and called his own sheep by name. 
The sheep know his voice. He brought them out of the sheepfold and led them beyond the Jordan. There, Jesus himself was the pasture, the green grass pasture. He fed his sheep there. He gives the best interpretation for Jesus' illustration of the sheepfold. As the fullness of time has come, the sheepfold fencing with the Old Testament law would be replaced by the New Testament. Shep. Shepherd would enter into the sheepfold. He would bring his sheep out of the sheepfold, and enter into the pasture of the kingdom of God. Dear brothers and sisters, this is for Jews as well as for the New Testament saints. We should not fence our new sheepfold with our own philosophy, or the theology, or our culture and tradition. We are all sheep on the pasture of our law. Let's pray. Lord, give us the spiritual eyes so that we may know what is the hope of His calling. You are the door of the sheepfold. You are also the gate of the kingdom of God. We can be delivered from the law and enter into the field of life through You. You are the good shepherd who gives your life for His sheep. You are great shepherd who watch over the path of each sheep. Until one day, you are the high priest. Who will return and reward us according to what we did? Bless my life and give me a pure heart and a submissive attitude to follow you. Pray in Jesus' name.